The Apple Theater concessions sells two sizes of popcorn, a micro box and a jumbo box. About how many square inches of cardboard are needed to make the micro box? There is no top to the box of popcorn. So the micro, um, when it talks about square inches, we're talking about surface area here. So if I was to, uh, well, I'm not going to draw it out. I'm just going to sort of use the existing drawing. So I know that this front face here is six, or sorry, four by six. So this has an area of 24 square inches. This area here is two by six, so that's an area of 12. Well, that means the back side is also going to be 24, and this side is going to be 12, and then we have the bottom. Remember, no top. So four by two is eight. So let's add these up. So I have 24 plus 24 for 48. I have 12 plus 12 for 24. And so if I add these two together, I'm going to get 2, okay, 12 really, carry the 1, that's 78. But then I still have the bottom plus, plus 8. So that's 80 square inches. Well, how many square inches of cardboard will it take to, for the jumbo box? Same basic idea. This face is going to be 8 by 12. Well, 8 times 12 is going to be 16, carry the 1. So that's 96 there. We'll have 96 here. And then on this side, we're going to have 4 by 12. 4 by 12 is 48. So this side will also be 48. And then the bottom, well, the bottom is 4 by 2, right? So 4 by 2 is, or sorry, 4 by 8. 4 by 8 is 32. And so we add all these together. So we have 96 plus 96 plus 48 plus 48 plus 32 for a grand total of 320 inches squared. Now, the other way we could have done this is we could have realized there are two ways to do this, of course. Mm -hmm. That the scale factor from the micro to the jumbo is 2. It's each side length is multiplied by 2. Well, you'll remember that scale, that when we're talking about area, the area is the scale factor squared times bigger. So scale factor in this case was 2, so 2 squared is 4. We could have just said 4 times 80. Now notice how that was a whole lot faster than actually going through each uh, face and adding them together. So then our next question is, what is the volume? And volume is just the area of the base times the height, or for a rectangular prism, it's just going to be all the dimensions multiplied together. So 2 times 4 times 6, well, that's 24. 24 times 2 is 48 inches cubed. So for the jumbo box, same idea. 4 times 8 times 12, and no one had problems with this. Um, 32 times 12, because 4 times 8 is 32. Now, obviously, no one would do it this way, but volume, or three dimensions, is going to be fail scale factor cubed. In this case, scale factor n was 2. 2 cubed is going to be uh, 8. So 8 times 48 is also going to be 384. So we could have done it either way. Thank you, Marcy. I've always wanted right on tabs. Not really. Um, so then, suppose the micro box sells for 75 cents. What should the price of the jumbo be? Well, so that means that 75 cents, I'm making a proportion here, 75 cents was good for 48 ounces. Well, so then, what is going to be good? What cost is going to be good? for 384 ounces. Again, you can find the scale factor to go from here to here. The scale factor you would find is um, 8 because of this relationship we just talked about. And so this times 8 is going to be 
six dollars. So the answer should, and let's double check, just to don't take my word for it. Six dollars. Um, suppose the theater decides to have a third popcorn, the Super Mongo box, <laughs> and they want the Super Mongo box to have twice the volume of the Jumbo box. So um, what would the dimensions be? So if they want it to be twice, now that's the, here's the tricky thing. So the super the the jumbo box. If I were to draw a box, we'll remember that it was I think four by eight by twelve. Yeah, four by eight by twelve. Four by eight by twelve. Remember, we just want it to be twice as big. Essentially, we want two of the boxes. So if I put a second box here, would I increase the volume by two? Yes. So now my new volume would be, or my new dimension would be eight, eight by 12. If you multiply all of the dimensions by two, you now have a box that is eight times as big as the jumbo box. And that would not be good. Obviously, I could have added my second box um, in any of my dimensions, but this one obviously makes the most sense. Come on, go to the next page. You can do it. So I've found that when working with electronics, to get it to do something that you want it to do and it's slow, swearing at it tends to make it do it faster. If you're in a position where you can't swear at it, then encouragement does absolutely nothing. Just a little life lesson for you right there. All right. <coughs> Jose filled a square prism with 729 cubic centimeters of colored water. He pushed a square pyramid uh, with the same base and same height as the prism into the prism. Some of the water came out shocking. How many cubic centimeters of the water were left in the prism? Ha <laughs> ha. So we remember that if I have a rectangular prism, actually, we want to just make it bigger. That's awful. Let's make a new one. Come on. Go away. Go away. Okay. So here's a rectangular prism. Oh, having troubles all of a sudden. If I were to put a pyramid inside of it, The pyramid would actually be one third the volume of the um, of the prism. So that means when I push that water in, as long as I don't spill, you know, spill with like a, a surge, that two thirds or one third of the volume of the water will be removed. So if I have 729 cubic centimeters to begin with, and I remove one third of it, that means I have two thirds remaining. So I'm going to multiply it by two thirds, which is obviously six repeating, and so we get 486 cubic centimeters. All right. These are scale drawings of two cylinders. One cylinder has a radius of six centimeters, and the other one has a radius of three and twenty. Do they have the same volume? Well, remember, it's the area of the base times the height. So the volume of a cylinder is area of the base, which is pi r squared, because it's a circle, right? And the area of a circle is pi r squared times the height. So let's do it for both. So we have pi times the radius 6 squared times the height. So then we have 6 squared, which is 36. So pi times 36 times 5. And then we have... 36 times 5 times pi. So this has a volume of 565.2, and this is centimeters cubed. I suspect this is going to be the bigger volume of the two. On the other side, we'll do the same thing. Pi r squared h. So we have pi times 3 squared times 20 
So 3 squared is 9 times 20 time, times pi. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at that. They have the same volumes. Well, do they have, they have the same surface area? The answer is probably going to be no. So yes, they do have the same thing. So when we do surface area for a cylinder, uh, we will have to reduce it to this drawing of the top, the side, and the bottom. So we found the area of the circle, pi r squared, and we have a radius of 6. So 6 times 6 times pi, 1, 1, 3. This also is an area of 1, 1, 3. Now, this edge here wraps around the edge of the circle. That's the circumference. The circumference is diameter times pi. So the diameter is going to be 12 times pi. And so that's this outside edge. And the height, <laughs> thank you, the height is 5. So I'm going to multiply it by 5. And so we get. So we add it with the top and the bottom. So it has a surface area of 141.4 centimeters squared. And the same thing is going to be true here. Top, side, bottom, radius squared times pi, 28.26. So that's the same here. And then we have our circumference, which is 6, uh, which is diameter. Diameter is 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 times pi. So that's 18.84 times my height of the cylinder, which is 20. So I'm going to add this with my 28.26 plus 28.26 and oh my goodness this one's a little bit bigger and there we go and there's our calculations and there's our answer